Hello, good evening and welcome to Parliament News. I'm Gautam Roy. First, let's take a look at what happened in the Lok Sabha today. Well, the Lok Sabha passed the motion of thanks on the President's address following a nearly 100-minute reply by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in which he hit out at the opposition over protests against the Citizenship Amendment Act or the CAA. Accusing the opposition of inciting protests against the CAA, the Prime Minister warned that street agitations against decisions of Parliament and state assemblies may lead to anarchy. Everyone should know this. Strongly defending the law, the Prime Minister asserted that it does not affect any Indian citizen. He said those rejected by the people in elections are fueling protests against CAA for their vote bank politics. He accused the opposition of using all its might to stoke imaginary fears about the law which grants citizenship to minorities fleeing from Muslim countries in the neighborhood. He likened its stand to that of Pakistan, saying Islamabad spoke the same language for decades to mislead and incite Indian Muslims, but with no success. What's surprising is that those thrown out of power by voters have resorted to doing all this. Ironically, the CAA has been criticized by those who love getting photographed with groups who want to disintegrate our country. That's what the Prime Minister said. <clears throat> he further rebutted the opposition's charge that his government has pursued communal politics to turn India into a Hindu country. He cited comments of Jawaharlal Nehru to underline that the Congress stalwart wanted citizens of minorities coming from Pakistan. Prime Minister Modi also touched on Kashmir, economy, unemployment and farmers' distress taking frequent digs at Congress leader Rahul Gandhi, whom he dubbed as a tube light. The Congress government opposed, imposed emergency, curbed the judiciary's powers, spoke against people's right to life and frequently dismissed opposition-run state governments. Amid thumping of benches by the ruling party members and their allies, the Prime Minister then invoked the Constitution to warn the protesters against decisions of Parliament and state assemblies. The Congress was expected to be a responsible opposition, but it had taken a wrong turn. That's what the PM said. Noting that the CAA was passed by Parliament and duly notified, the Prime Minister told the opposition parties that the road taken by them is a matter of worry. What will happen if people refuse to accept a decision taken by the Rajasthan Assembly, stage dharna and resort to arson? That's what the PM asked. Printing out a, small, a similar example by Madhya Pradesh, the Congress is in power in the two states. What will happen then? He asked. Can the country run this way? This is a road to anarchy and such a path can put the opposition in trouble as well. The Prime Minister underlined that his government has pushed the development agenda in Jammu and Kashmir and asserted that it has full faith in the people of the valley. Citing the comments of Farooq Abdullah, Mehbubha Mufti and Omar Abdullah, who had warned that any decision to nullify Article 370 may sever the valley's link with India, he asked if those who believe in India's constitution can tolerate such remarks. The PM said Kashmir's identity was buried on the 19th of January 1990 when Kashmiri pundits began leaving the valley due to militancy. Attacking the Congress, he said a person who was accused of involvement in the 1984 anti-Sikh riots was made chief minister. Does a party that keeps talking about secularism not remember 1984 and the anti-Sikh violence? The Prime Minister said if his government worked according to the old ways, the Ram Janbhumi issue would have remained unsolved. Kartarpur Sahib corridor would not be a reality and there would be no India-Bangladesh land agreement. Without naming Rahul Gandhi, the Prime Minister said he heard an opposition MP saying that they would beat Modi with sticks in six months. The Prime Minister said he has decided to do more Surya Namaskar to make his back even stronger to face abuses. On the economy, the PM said that the government has kept the fiscal deficit in check, price rise is also under control and there is macroeconomic stability. Referring to the Northeast, the Prime Minister said that for years, Distance had been a reason to ignore this region. Things have changed now and the region is becoming a growth engine in every way. After the motion was passed, the Lok Sabha took up a discussion on the budget. Congress leader Manish Tiwari hit out at the government over its economic policies. Unemployment is rising and the government is resorting to sell off public sector units. He said the country's GDP growth at 5% is the lowest in 11 years. Employment rate has touched the lowest point in the last few decades. Countering him, Jayant Sinha of the BJP said the Congress is seeing through the rearview mirror, ignoring the fact that the government is looking ahead at a $5 trillion economy. The Modi government removed the UPA-era billionaire's Raj and replaced it with People's Raj, he said. 
stating that the economy is moving at a great pace. Jayant Sinha said, if GST collection numbers are looked at, the opposition will realize that the economy is moving ahead. He also said interest rates have come down and inflation has declined to boost consumption. And now let's tell you what's happened in the Raj Sabha today as well. Well, the Raj Sabha smoothly functioned for the third consecutive day today. In his reply to the debate on the motion of thanks for the President's address, Prime Minister Modi attacked the Congress and opposition parties for spreading rumours about the Citizenship Amendment Act and the National Population Register, saying it's being done for vote bank politics. They should ask themselves whether it is not their duty to stop spreading misinformation. Should we be a part of such a campaign? This path is not right. Sit and think whether we are moving in the right direction. That's what the Prime Minister said in the Upper House. Sharing the remarks of past leaders including Dal Bahadur Shastri and Ramana Lohia on protecting non-Muslim minorities in Pakistan, he said, were they communal? Congress is forgetting the great leaders for vote bank politics. This is a matter of concern. He said all these issues were fine 10 years back, but now they are protesting. I never thought defeat would so severely affect the erstwhile ruling party. That's what the PM said as well. Strongly defending the National Population Register, that's the NPR, the PM said it was being updated to allow the rightful beneficiaries to get the benefit of government welfare schemes. He said NPR came into being in 2010 and was later updated in 2015. Census and NPR are usual administrative processes which have been carried out previously as well but have now suddenly become contentious. NPR is purely governance related, he said, asking the opposition parties to not politicize the issue for narrow political gains. They are opposing NPR for narrow and frivolous political narrative. This is anti-poor, he said, adding his government had made productive use of the data collected by previous NPRs to give benefits to the, of the schemes to poor. They have record of your NPR. No citizen was persecuted based on that record of NPR, said the Prime Minister, citing the statement of the Home Minister of the Congress-led UPA government appealing to citizens to enroll in the exercise. The PM further said, your narratives are decided on vote bank politics. When it comes to appeasement, you will choose the path of division instead of growth. Any party can gain or lose because of opportunistic opposition, but this will definitely affect the country and create an atmosphere of distrust. So I urge you all to uphold the truth in public. On Jammu and Kashmir, the Prime Minister said its special status was scrapped after detailed discussion in Parliament. He attacked the opposition for not offering any constructive suggestion during the debate, saying they made a virtue out of frustration. Sharing data on the improved situation in Jammu and Kashmir, the PM said for the first time in decades, people of the Union Territory got benefits of reservation. Jammu and Kashmir got a comprehensive start-up after abolition of Article 370. For the first time, an anti-corruption bureau was set up there. The PM said the decision to abrogate the special status of Jammu and Kashmir in August last year was taken with full conviction. The entire nation had detailed discussions on the subject. The MPs voted in favour of the decision. People do not forget these things easily. I want to remind the leader of opposition in the Raj Sabha about the manner in which proceedings regarding the creation of Telangana took place. The House was locked and televised address stopped when the bill to bifurcate Andhra Pradesh was passed, he recalled. The Prime Minister emphasised that there is unprecedented peace in the northeast now. He said this while countering the opposition charge of unrest in the region following an amendment to the citizenship law. That's all we have in Parliament News for the moment. Have a good night.